Okay, so this is a key to the worksheet on Topic 7, Part A. And Topic 7, Part A is where you had to solve these linear inequalities. Now keep in mind that there are a couple of things you needed to do. So first of all, you had to indicate the solution in interval notation, so make sure you do that. And you also had to graph the solution set, okay? All right, so um, number one, this is what we have for number one. So number one, we have this. We have two times x plus one plus three x is less than x plus three. So you want to find the solutions that will satisfy this linear, this linear inequality. And so, so we have this left side which has a parentheses in it, and so we want to use the distributive property first. So, so this can be your work. So you're going to say, you're going to say two x, and then two times one is two, plus three x is less than x plus three. All right. So, so now we're going to combine like terms. So you're going to solve this linear inequality just like you would a linear equation. So, so combining like terms, I get 2x plus 3x is 5x plus 2 is less than x plus 3. All right, now, just like with the linear equation, you can bring all the variables one side constants to the other. So I'm going to subtract x from both sides, and so I get 5x minus x is 4x plus 2 is less than, this is 0 when I combine those, is less than 3. And then subtracting 2 from both sides, subtracting 2 from both sides, I get 4x is less than 1. And then getting x by itself, I'm going to divide both sides by 4. And so when I do that, 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times x is x. So I get x is less than 1 fourth. All right, now what I found is this. So this right here, this right here indicates what the solutions are. So, so my solution would be any, any real number less than 1 fourth. Okay, so in my solution, remember, is, is all real numbers. This means all real numbers less than one-fourth. That's my solution. So, so how many real numbers are there less than a fourth? There's an infinite number of those. So, so we can't list them all. We can't physically list them all because zero is a solution. Um, one-fifth is a solution. Negative 8.2 is a solution negative 17 is a solution. So any number, any real number less than one-fourth is a solution. Now, keep in mind though, see there's no equal sign here, so one-fourth is not a solution. So if you substitute one-fourth, one-fourth into the original problem, the left side will not be less than the right side. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right, now what you want to do, though, is you want to write the answer in interval notation. So you're going to circle, so you're going to circle this or box this off so you found your solution. Now we're going to put it in interval notation. So interval notation. Interval notation. And then they also want you to graph it. Now what some students prefer to do is this. So they prefer to graph first because once you graph it, you can easily get the interval notation. So watch what happens. So on the number line, just you just draw a number line, and you and all I want you to do is just to put this number in the number line. So you have one fourth here. Just put one fourth. Now, um, I want you to use, um, and it didn't tell you in there, but remember we talked about open circle, closed circle, parentheses, brackets. I'm going to go ahead and just use parentheses and brackets. Um, so since there's no equal sign here, I'm going to put parentheses on one fourth. If there was an equal sign, I'd use brackets. But since there's no equal sign here, it's just less than, we're going to use parentheses. And I'm going to shade in everything less than that, so meaning everything to the left. So the error, um, the, the um, parentheses must be pointing to the left, just like this. And then you shade it and you draw your arrow. Just make sure it looks like this. And make sure on one-fourth, that's where you draw your parentheses. Okay, so here's what some students do. So let me say this. So this is a mistake that some students do. So if you did it on the worksheet, don't make it on the on your test or your final exam. So this is a mistake students will do. They'll do this. And they'll say, all right, here's one fourth like this. And then watch. They'll do this. They'll put the parentheses here and then shade it in. Well, why put it there when you're saying this is one fourth? So don't do that. You understand what I'm saying? So don't put the parentheses here or here if you're saying this little notch right here represents one-fourth. Okay, so so be careful. All right? Okay, 
So now the integral notation, remember uh, when doing integral notation or when reading a graph, reading a graph, you always go from left to right. So, so this arrow is pointing towards negative infinity. And whenever you are dealing with infinity or negative infinity, remember you always put parentheses. So it's parentheses negative infinity, make it look like an infinity symbol, comma all the way to one fourth. Since there's no equal sign, we use parentheses, you're gonna use parentheses. All right, so there's, there's your interval notation and there's your, your graph. Now, I just wanna say something because you could see this as well at some point. Suppose they asked you for said builder notation. You don't need this here, but let's suppose they did. Said builder notation, said builder notation. So remember in one of the lessons you learned about that, so there might be some my math, my math, my math lab problems that may ask you to put it in said builder notation. So all said builder notation is this. You see this right here? Okay, so you're gonna say this. It's the set, the set, so we use this little base to represent set of x's such that, remember this means such that, and all you do is write this over, such that x is less than one fourth, and then close your set. And that's it, that's said builder notation. So remember this means the the set of x's such that x is less than one fourth. Okay, so that's number one. All right, let's look at number two. Number two, we have this problem, number two. We have four plus three times x plus two is greater than or equal to negative two. All right, so um, again, we're gonna use a distributive property. So we're gonna do this first. Don't, don't say four plus three first. You know, that's, a, that's an error. You gotta multiply before you add. Um, so order of operations. So we're going to use the distributive property. So I say 4 plus 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 2 is 6 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Combining like terms on the left side, I get 3x. 4 and 6 is 10. Is greater than or equal to negative 2. All right. And so all you do is just get the variable x by itself. So let's subtract 10 from both sides. And so when I subtract 10 from both sides and combine like terms, 10 and negative 10 is 0. I get 3x plus 0 is 3x is greater than or equal to negative 2, and a negative 10 is a negative 12. And then finally, dividing both sides by 3, I get a 3 divided by 3 is 1, 1 times x is x, so x is greater than or equal to negative 4. So all of my solutions, which is an infinite number of those, will be greater than or equal to negative 4. So those are your solutions. So any real number, any real number greater than or equal to negative 4. Notice this time, you remember I, yeah, I, we're using the equal sign as well, okay? <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about the graph now. So there, there's your, your solution set, well, your solutions as in terms of an inequality. The graph will look like this. So you have your number line, you have negative four, see the little notch, negative four. We're gonna use a bracket because, because negative four is a solution. Negative four is a solution, okay? So any, in fact, any number greater than negative four is a solution. Hope you know that. So for example, let's see why negative four is a solution. So let's just check negative four. Okay, let's check negative four, x equal negative four. So in, in, in the original problem, we're just checking to see why it's a solution. You have four plus three times, four plus three times x is negative four, so negative four plus two is greater than equal to negative two. So I wanna see if that's a true statement. Well, negative four plus two is a negative two, right? So I get four plus three times a negative two. Negative two times three is a negative six. So I get four plus negative six. And then, and then watch, four plus negative six is a negative two. And is, is negative two greater than or equal to negative two? Yes, it is, it's equal to. All right, and so in fact, any number greater than that will make this a true statement. This side will be, in fact, for the rest of those, this side will be greater than negative two. All right, now, so, so you're gonna put a bracket over negative four going to the right, because it says greater than or equal to, so you can shade in everything to the, to the right, just like this, make it look like this. And so then your interval notation, your interval notation will look like this. So you have um, negative four, oops, sorry. Your interval notation will be bracket, sorry, bracket negative four comma infinity with a parenthesis. So remember, bracket negative four, you start negative four, 
you're going to use bracket because you remember it's, it is a solution because of the equal sign and you're going all the way and this is pointing towards infinity and whenever you use infinity and negative infinity you put parentheses with it. All right, so that was number two. Number three, we have this. We have a number three. We have six minus two x is greater than x minus three. Okay, so so what I would do here, I'm going to go ahead and bring the variables to the left side. So if we bring the variables to the left side, I'm going to subtract x from both sides. And so I get 6, a negative 2x, and a negative x is a negative 3x is greater than negative 3. Okay? Subtracting 6 from both sides, combining like terms, 6 to negative 6 is 0. I get negative 3x is greater than a negative 3, and a negative 6 is a negative 9. All right, now I've got to get x by itself. So I'm going to have to divide both sides by negative 3. Now this is where, remember, you divide by negative number. So remember, when you're dividing an inequality or multiplying an inequality by a negative number, you have to reverse this, this inequality symbol. So we're going to get uh, negative 3 times negative 3, divided by negative 3 is 1. 1 times x is x. We get x is less than, you reverse, and negative 9 divided by negative 3 is a positive 3. So that's your solution. So be careful. If if you didn't if if you did not reverse it you you're you're stating the wrong solutions. Okay, so as a graph, so there there's your inequality solutions. As a graph, it will look like this. So here's three. There's no equal sign, so you're going to say parentheses, going to the left. Interval notation. Interval notation. You're going to say since it's pointing to the left negative infinity, parentheses, comma, all the way to 3 with parentheses. All right, now let me show you something real quick. So, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this over. I'm going to rewrite it over. And you see how I brought the variables to the left side? You could have, remember, you, you, you can do this just like you've been doing with an equation. You can bring the variables to the right side if you want to. It does not matter. Okay, so if I add 2x to both sides, let's see what happens. Combine like terms, I get 6 is greater than x plus 2x is 3x minus 3. Add 3 to both sides, I get 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 is greater than 3x. Divide both sides by 3 now to get x by itself. I get, now I want you to notice something. You see right here, I had to divide both sides by negative 3. Here, I divided both sides by positive 3. That's because, that's because I, I, in this case, I brought the variables to the left. In this case, I'm bringing the variables to the right. But in any case, in any case, 3 divided by 3 is 1. X is, now be careful how you read this. You're going to read this as 9 divided by 3 is 3. So you're going to say 3 is greater than X. Or you can also read it going backwards. You can say R, X is less than 3. Okay? So this statement and this statement are equivalent. X, 3 is greater than x means the same thing as going backwards. Going backwards, x is less than 3. So, so here's, what, here's the point I'm making here. And, we did, and that was, there was a discussion about this in the lesson. If you do this, you've got to be careful. Some students mess up. They'll put, they'll put 3 here. And then they'll put parentheses, but they see the greater than sign, and they go and, and they go to the to the right because they see greater than. But that's not true. This remember all your all your solutions are less than three, so you got to be careful. All your solutions are less than three, and so interval notation would be negative infinity to three parentheses. So be careful when you do this. So so that's why most students most students prefer when dealing with an inequality prefer to bring the variables to the left. So that way they don't make that mistake of shading into the right when it should be to the left. Okay? All right, number four. So number four, we had this. So number four, you had 8 minus 3 times 2 minus x is less than or equal to negative 4. Okay, so, so we're going to distribute first. So we get 8. A negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. A negative 3 times a positive times a negative x is a positive 3x, and that's less than or equal to negative 4. Combining like terms, I get 3x. 8 subtract 6 is positive 2, less than or equal to negative 4. Subtracting 2 from both sides, combining like terms, 
I get 3x is less than or equal to a negative 6. Dividing both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 1 times x is x. I get all my solutions or any real number that's less than or equal to a negative 2. All right, and so let's graph it. So the graph will look like this. I have negative 2. Since there's an equal sign, meaning that negative 2 is going to be a solution, we use a bracket pointing to the left because it says less than. And then the interval notation, interval notation, you're just going to say parentheses negative infinity, it's pointing towards negative infinity, comma, all the way to negative 2 with a bracket. All right, and so that was number four. So that is the key to the uh, worksheet on the on the uh, topic seven part A and again that dealt with linear inequalities